Hey everyone, welcome to Darkling Alley. We're back for episode 6 of our Ellen Wake post-gameplay discussion and recap. So let's get started. But first, I just want to say that this is kind of a bittersweet time. This is our last video from the series, episode 6. And, you know, it's been fun. We've yes. been having a lot of fun with this. And we've also, Chipotle's been making a killing off of us. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've gotten Chipotle. We... Yeah. Quite a bit. <laughs> We've been recording a lot. So, yes, they're making bank from us, and we're making videos <laughs> because <laughs> it allows us more time. It's been worth it. So, like Jay said, let's get started. We start with a second flashback to Alan's life in New York with Alice two years prior to the events of the game. However, as we pointed out before, the calendar says 2010. Yes, every calendar does say 2010. It's one of those things where we, again, I, we've actually mentioned this several times. We have a video for every year is 2010. We kind of explain some of what we think about that. Honestly, I think it's one of the ones that should be watched the most. Because we explain more than just that every year is 2010 and how we find that out. I mean, there's plenty of indication in here that Alan is writing this all in 2010. That these flashbacks maybe are memories that are messed up <laughs> mm -hmm. or maybe didn't happen. More on that later, actually. Yeah, it's one of my favorite videos and it's got a lot of really good information in there. So if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And if you notice, too, in this section, the walls are painted different color. They've upgraded. There's still no photos of him and Alice together, and it looks as if only one person sleeps in the bed. Yes. There's no indication at all. I mean, there's pictures everywhere of the cityscape or whatever, but there are no pictures of Alan and Alice. Like, look at that. They could put one right there. There's all kinds of places they could put some, but there are no pictures of them ever together. Or even just like Alan doesn't have one of her on his nightstand or anything like that. There's just no indication. Just like the cabin in the last video, there's no indication that Alice was ever there. In these flashbacks, there's not really any indication that they are together. Like, as in a married couple. So, I don't know. Am I freaking out about that too? <laughs> <laughs> so, after Alan listens to a voicemail from Barry... I had explained why it is I think that Alice is so patient with Alan. I don't know about anyone else, but like the first time I saw Alice, I got the uncanny valley sort of vibes from her. <laughs> like she's got the smile that kind of looks like the Joker. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be mean. She's just, there's something about her, right? Mm -hmm. And like, she's just way too understand. She's like this, She's like every man's dream wife, like they could just get away with everything and they'd be, and she's like, oh, honey, it's okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but anyway, so I go on to kind of explain why it is that I think she's so patient with Alan as like, say, if she were just some regular human being, and that is because she always attacks Barry for Alan's behavior. So they'll get in trouble together. They'll be out partying like she was on this. In this flashback, she's mad at him because he was partying until like 7 in the morning. or so He didn't get home till 7 in the morning. And she was really upset. Well, she went off on Barry. So it's like she got it out of her system. She's okay now. They've been, you know, she's kind of, I guess, I don't know, just has some space. And then she comes home and she's a little bit irritated. But as soon as he, what, kind of says what's troubling him, she's just like, oh, baby, oh, honey, it's going to be okay. I don't know, whatever it was she said. <laughs> I really should have this memorized. And speaking of Alan's apartment, I didn't mention this during our gameplay, but when you really look and listen, and this is mostly in like the first flashback because here in the second flashback, things look a little bit better around there. But the apartment for a successful writer it doesn't look all that posh, you know what I mean? Uh, there was like, what, holes and scratches and things and their appliances. If you see here, that microwave looks like 100 years old, mm -hmm. you know? I think the nicest thing you have is a coffee maker, the refrigerator. Everything looks just bad, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's one of those things where they have to fix it up themselves or 
whatever, but it's still, it's pretty small and it's not all that nice. But what really caught my attention is that the whole time, especially that first flashback, there's like sirens going on constantly. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Like outside, it sounds like what people would think of as stereotypical New York. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what it is. There's sirens constantly and fire engines and it sounds like a war zone out there or something, you know. And also a little bonus here. I don't think I mentioned this before because it's been so long. The first flashback was like, what, second episode? But if you notice the designs, like the textures in their walls, it looks a little bit familiar. We're going to skip ahead to when Alan's on the highway on the way to Cauldron Lake. And we point out how the billboards no longer show Pat Main on the radio advertisement. Yeah, everything's just really generic. Before there was the issue said like Pat Main, the voice of Pat Main, mm-hmm. <laughs> the night owl or whatever. It's not there anymore. There are other things that are still there, like that one, the Cauldron Lake Campgrounds. But everything else is a little different. Mm-hmm. There are some things that are missing now. We had also questioned how all of Nightingale's pictures and papers made it back into the air vent when he wasn't there to do it. Perhaps since he was only touched by the dark presence, he was able to go back to the hotel and stash everything away. Kind of like Stucky, he was only touched by the dark presence and was eventually taken. Right. When we see Alan at the beginning of part two and he's in the sheriff's station, there's a radio that you can go listen to, and you can hear deputies looking for him. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky Gas Station with Thornton. There's no sign of him. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is Thornton. Look, he's located the brake float. It's here. That's some good news, right? Stucky was supposed to be driving it at the rehearsal today. Over. Oh, give me that. Mulligan here. Looks like someone really thrashed the garage. Over. Okay, roger that, guys. Keep looking for Stucky. Chains out. We don't know how long it's been before he actually got taken. So if you follow us on Twitter, you have probably seen our post that we have a fun find in this one. And we're really excited about this because this is another thing that we just found during post-production, kind of just by accident. But it's a really big deal. So if you watch Alan jump, again, (laughs) off of a cliff like so many other times. This one is special because they'll show him for a couple of seconds here. And we'll just play it for you too in slow speed so you can follow us. But on his way down, they'll show a quick shot of him, you know, like a faraway shot like you see in the first time when when he falls into Cauldron Lake after seeing Mott. And this time though, they show that same type of point of view, but he's not in the picture. And it's not because he doesn't have a flare and we don't have anything to follow downward. We look at this in slow motion. And again, we're showing this a couple of times. He's nowhere to be seen. He's just gone. Yeah, he's... And and I'm trying to understand, and I, I have a couple ideas, trying to understand what that was all about. You know, obviously they wanted us to see this, right? If anybody can see Alan in this, <laughs> I can't see Alan anywhere. We've watched this several times. But anyway, anyone who's ever noticed this or has anything to say about it, please let us know. Use the comment section or follow us on Twitter because we talk a lot about this stuff on Twitter too. We had pointed out Barbara Jagger's reflection in the pictures in Alan's apartment after he jumps into the lake. Yeah, that was really creepy. Yeah, I didn't notice yeah. that at first, and then Oh after... my gosh, I didn't notice it until several playthroughs, actually. Right, now you can't unsee it. <laughs> Here he comes. Now, this is something that is not just us. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Who the f*** is Mr. Scratch supposed <laughs> to be? Honestly, like, when you think about it, And he tells Alan, this is who your friends are going to see when you're gone. Okay, well, first of all, how does Alan know he's going to be gone? Mm -hmm. No one has told him so far, as far as I know. Yeah, see, this is who your friends will meet when you're gone. I would be like, what? Where am I going? And unless Alan knows already somehow, I don't remember being a manuscript page or anything to indicate to him that he was going to stay in the dark place. Mm -hmm. Even if he didn't read anything about a double you know, a doppelganger, whatever. There was nothing to indicate that he was going to have to stay there. 
Yeah, I mean, this is another reason why I don't like Zane. I mean, he's all nonchalant about, like, mm-hmm. this is who your friends are going to meet. Some fucked up psychopath. Well, you, yeah, you can tell he is. Like, I would be like, uh, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. But no, I mean, he doesn't question it. Yeah. So we also did point out that this conversation between Zane and Alan, or Zane slash Alan and Barbara slash Alice, it's really random. Like, what does Alice leaving Alan have to do with anything mm-hmm. that has happened in the game? My guess, probably more than we think. Yeah. So that we'll cover later, too, of course. I, mm-hmm. You know what? Probably everybody's getting sick of saying that. <laughs> we'll tell you later. We'll talk about it later. We'll say something later. That's just the way it has to be for now. Right now, this is just a recap. This is just kind of like... We wanted to do something for people who didn't have time to watch the videos or just didn't want to sit through gameplay, but just wanted to get to the juicy stuff. So that's what we're doing. That's what this is for. And I've been enjoying, like we said in the beginning. So, you know, it's worth it. Yeah, it's been fun doing these. It definitely doesn't seem like we're already on the last one. After the, I guess, main event, Alice emerges from the lake. And then we see them go back to Bright Falls. And they're celebrating Deerfest and the bridge is back. Everything looks like it did when Alan first got to town. You know, everything looks fine. Everything looks normal for, you know, as far as like what it looked like when Alan was there the first time. I don't know if anyone's really put much consideration into this, but if you notice in the stands, there's a lot of men, it looks like, that are like dressed in all black. Kind of like the Taken. Yeah. And some of them are, you know, marching behind the Deerfest float. And they're just all dressed in black from head to toe. And it's like, are those guys touched by the Dark Presence? Or what is that all about? But if you notice, Sheriff Breaker's not there. You know, of course, Barry's not there. No, Cynthia Weaver. <laughs> mm-hmm. No one that was with Alan before. They're not anywhere to be seen. You would think that maybe they would be around somewhere hanging out, talking. But everything seems to be going on. Business as usual. Life's going on. Everybody's okay. They're celebrating. Everyone else was having a good time, like nothing ever happened, except for Rose and Nightingale, who seem to be in kind of a daze. But of course, them being touched by the Dark Presence, it makes sense. I don't know for sure, but he could be looking at us. Mm -hmm. This could be a fourth wall thing. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. This was a great game. We played it for the first time on a PS4 Pro, and we knew right away that we were going to make a video about this. So what you're seeing right now is our first, not attempt, but this was supposed to go with our first Alan Wake video. And it's kind of a music video sequence to the song Haunted by, is it Poe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what this was supposed to go to. We know we couldn't use it because it's a licensed track, but... We thought we'd go ahead and end the video with this as part of our outro because this is our first work for Alan Wake. Yeah, we didn't want it to not see the light of day. Oh, and it was fun too. It was, yeah. We had a lot of fun making this. Yeah, we had a lot of fun throughout the entire process and we're really excited to see what comes from Alan Wake 2 because all of these videos we've done, all of the examining things, analyzing things, We were excited to see not just what we may have uncovered, but other content creators as well, other people's ideas. I don't know, it's just so exciting. But we're not done yet. We still have the Alan Wake trailer to talk about. So we're going to be analyzing that or just picking it apart, seeing what we can find and what might be coming up in Alan Wake too, now that we have some more information. So we can't wait for that. Otherwise, we're done now with Alan Wake. So if we played all the games, It's time to move on into the future a little bit, and so we hope you'll stick with us. Yeah, I want to give a big thank you to all of you that watched our Alan Wake recap videos. We hope you enjoyed them. That's right. So until then, Darkling Alley, out.